Hi, my name is James Stanford, born and raised here in Las Vegas. And currently I have an exhibit at the studio at Sahara West Library called Shimmering Zen. Shimmering Zen show actually started back in 1998. I started working on this material. Originally it was known as Indra's Jewels, after Indra's Jeweled Net, a Buddhist metaphor for the holographic nature of the universe, in which everything is reflected into everything else. A couple of years ago, I decided to do a major book, titled it Shimmering Zen, mainly because of the quality of the uh, lenticular works that I've been doing. They have a tendency to kind of shimmer. The first painting in the show is from 1970. It was started in 1969 upon my return from Spain. I went to the Prado Museum. And so at 20, I walked into one of the world's greatest museums and saw Hieronymus Bosch's Garden of Earthly Delights and uh, the Hay Wayne and Peter Bruegel's work and Goya's black paintings and by the time I got to a painting called Deposition, painted in 1435 by Roger van der Weyden, it was the first time I'd ever seen master works. And staring at the way that the artist had rendered the fabric of the robes, I just suddenly got dizzy and lost consciousness and fell to the floor. 15 minutes I was out. They finally revived me and ironically, because of this incident, which I later learned was called Stendhal Syndrome, where upon seeing a great work of art or a natural phenomenon like a waterfall or something, people sometimes lose consciousness. And I did this painting called Revelations. I didn't even have an easel. I had a dresser drawers. And I placed this wood panel on the dresser drawers and sat on the edge of my bed and painted that painting. It was the first really successful painting that I had ever done. Ironically, that is the painting that started it all. It was, of course, influenced by uh, an experience with psychedelics, and of course that whole era of 1968-69 with the summer of love. Uh, it was just a wild time, and of course I was a long-haired hippie youth, rebelling as well. Finally, uh, when I graduated in 71 with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Painting, I started applying to graduate schools. I applied to four different graduate schools. And I got into three graduate schools, which is unheard of. It's like, usually you get into one graduate school, but this painting was so strong that even the, the people didn't really understand what I was even doing with it, could see that there was ability and that there was a kind of a numinous quality, something that was coming out of me that wasn't influenced by any art movement that was current in the United States. When people look at this Indra's Jewels work or the Shimmering Zen work, they see a lot of reflection a lot of symmetry and of course the first word that comes to most people's minds are, is a kaleidoscope that it's got a kaleidoscopic effect but that's mainly because of the symmetry of it but to me they're more than that they're mandalas they're modern mandalas i've taken bits and pieces of las vegas my hometown las vegas signage and i've reflected them into these symmetrical pieces that have an energy to them that I think is really like a mandala. Mandala is like a roadmap to consciousness and it guides you, it takes you on a trip. And that's what I've always wanted to do with my artwork, even hearkening back to the early days of Revelations is take people on a trip. So I see them as meditative roadmaps.
The lenticular was a uh, type of image that always influenced me. I remember when I first saw a lenticular piece, it was from a Cracker Jacks box. It was the little eyeball and it would wink at you. Then of course, many souvenirs down the road, uh, the uh, Sacred Heart Jesus and the Sacred Heart Mary, the heart appears on the Jesus and the Mary, and it's a cool effect, you know? And I thought, well, I wonder how they do this. And so I started researching, you know, what it would take to do a, a modern lenticular image of, of some size. You know, it originally had started in the 16th century in France, where an artist had painted three separate paintings onto one painting that had different laths that ran vertically down the entire surface of the painting. From one angle you would see one painting, from the straight ahead you would see another, and from the other side you'd see yet a third image. I take two different layers or three different layers of a piece and uh, those layers are printed one stripe at a time on one single sheet of paper or substrate. And then the lens itself uh, brings that into focus and breaks it into the different images that you see. I've been doing a lot of the uh, metal works lately. They're basically polished aluminum with a dye sublimation print. And then I realized that uh, with the CNC process or the computer navigated cutting process, that all I had to do was basically create some die cut lines with Illustrator. So even though I create most of my work using Photoshop, I use Illustrator to create these die cuts so that they can cut shapes out of the image.
the paper prints that I've been using, they're printed on a silver halide paper. The paper is exposed by lasers, so it's called laser jet. It's burned right onto the photographic paper like you would burn a regular print, except lasers do the printing. And the length of time that the laser stays on the paper, it changes the color. These other prints are Fujichrome pearl prints, which is kind of a white metallic paper. It's almost like it has its own light. And then that paper, after it's processed and it's fully exposed, is run through a, a wall into a dark room and given a C4 process, sort of like a Cibachrome process, so that the prints actually have an emulsion, like a Cibachrome print. So you're looking at this work and it's got this vibrancy of having a metallic type background to it, and yet it's this beautiful, thick uh, photographic emulsion that you could only get through regular photography. So it's kind of like the best of both worlds. I can take the digital image and yet create a regular photograph with it.